you know, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you came up, man. Um, because have you been, have you been in the kind of black manosphere space for very long? Yeah, I will say about four years. Okay. It's actually what pulled me out of the pro-black space was getting red pill. But nah, wow. but for real, man. Thank you so much for coming through, dog. I appreciate you. Thanks for the for the input. Nah, Peace. man, it's all good. All right, What's all right, up? Uh, Black, all right, Black Ronin. What's up, Mad Black Ronin? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. Um, so you were on, so I uh, uh, jumped in to sum up. I'm gonna be up to play until one. Oops. I'm a night owl. Are you? I used to work security. I used to work security, so it used to be my shift used to be um, ten to six in the morning. Okay. So I've always been like kind of doing 10 years of that work. Okay. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just used to up late. chilling at nighttime. Yeah, up late. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm up all hours. I don't sleep that much, but I'm trying to do a, a million things at once. What do you, um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you came up and, um, cause have you been, have you been in the kind of black manosphere space for very long? Yeah. I will say about four years. Okay. It's actually what pulled me out of the pro black space was getting red pill. Okay. Because I saw the matriarchy up close. I've always been purple, more purple, mm -hmm. or, you know, or whatever. And then I was in the pro black space for a while, for three years. And then, um, but I started to see things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I tried to, like, yeah. art, I tried to argue against it. Yeah. Like, you know, in with myself, but then I got like literally threatened with, I got literally threatened with, um, by, uh, radical feminists in there because I wouldn't side with them. Mm. I wouldn't side with them. And, um, so to start to make up a whole bunch of stories, mind you, they didn't know my name. They didn't know what I look like. They didn't know anything about me, yeah. but they just said that, um, they said I was sexist. I was I was a misogynist, misogynoirist. Yeah. They, they 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 even to the point even other women were like these chicks are crazy. But when I saw them rally around each other at the end, that was a big sign for me that they're not for pro blacks. They're pro black women. There's a difference. Mm. Yeah, and. And um, I was done after that. I was really kind of done, but I was slowly, you know, and then um, there was a guy up in there. His name was Gino. And he pulled me into the black uh, manosphere, which showed me clips and stuff. And then that was like my gateway drug right there. Yeah. And um, then I started, then I, I, I stumbled onto O'Shea. Okay. And then, the, and then I stumbled into, from O'Shea, I stumbled into the SYSBM crowd. I was in there. That's when I, I really started to make friends in there, which from was really beneficial financially for me. Um, because I met like, dude, <laughs> we got we I met a group of girls. First it started off about women, like traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. I would definitely say S I, I feel Passport Bros got started in SYSBM crew, the chat rooms. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I, the, and 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 um, that's how I feel mutated and then mutated. We started off in the what app, what app groups. Gotcha. And then it, and then um, then we had an infiltrator, and uh, I don't know if you've heard it, but it's called. His originally was called Black Manosphere Manosphere Exposed. And then later he was called Passport Bros Exposed. Hmm. And he's a college educated dude. Um, what what did but, he expose? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What 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 did no, he expose? Guy talk. He exposed that guy talk. Chat rooms, dudes with having locker room talk. Got you. And there was, and of course, there was some clips shared, 
and things like that. And he felt the need to expose expose us to women. And and this guy is <clears throat> I forgot his name. I mean, it's surprising I forgot his name. But he's actually like he has a um, what do you call that? He has a yeah. He's on YouTube under Passport Bros Exposed, and he's I think he was writing a thesis, a college thesis, mm. and uh, I guess trying to get a PhD. Got you. And yeah, he like like Broken Blade said he drank the uh, liberal Kool Aid. Yeah. And I remember going on one of his blogs and I saw my name. The photo and my oh. name in it, and I was vexed, bro, I, huh. because I would never do that to another guy. Never, yeah. I would never. I wouldn't even do it to another woman. Un- yeah, unless it was unless I was using that to go take it to court. Yeah, but I would never do that to any like because I know it's a private chat room and this is the space for for that. Yeah, and. Yeah. I remember just being so feeling so betrayed, and a lot of the guys in there were good guys, which is good guys. There were ex military, there was ex military guys. There was few that was that was that was uh, teachers, school teachers, mm. and this could have made them lose their jobs. Yeah, and 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 but these, these are but you know the school teachers they're still men. They're still going to have their own feelings. They're still going to have their own views, and. I felt like this for a long time. There hasn't been a male space, yeah, for just guys to be guys, except maybe on the basketball court, yeah, the in the gym, yeah. And then once in 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 this, but now there's be very few gyms that is really male centric. Yeah. Like Ghost Gym used to be a spot. Like I remember I used to go to a local Ghost Gym. It used to be 100 percent good, like 99 percent dudes up in there. Different backgrounds, different cultures, different races, different ethnicities. Yeah. And that guy took it over. Now I when I went back up in there, it's sixty percent women. Yeah. And the guys in there are like many of the guys in there just left. Yeah. And this was and, and, and it's weird, man. It was just so weird. Well, I mean here well ultimately, you know, the, the, the strategy is to break us up, to keep us from communicating, keep us from talking. The strategy is is as old as is is prostitution to be honest with you right um mm-hmm. the 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 slave owner, old owners and i and i do refer back to that because honestly i feel like we're american blacks aren't that far away from where we were not that long ago they found out that if they put us together where we could communicate that's when we would up, do upright we would uprise there that's where we had mutiny that's when we would we would rise up and that's when they had problems. So they knew very quick. They, they realized that they needed to keep us separate so we couldn't talk. That practice l- goes all the way up into the, the civil rights movement. For example, um, you know, I used to remember, you know, you see like the old 60s, the videos of um, the 50s and the 60s where they would be um, uh, picketing and, and they'd be walking in circles. Yeah. Right. I always wondered why that was. Right. I was like, why are they kind of walking in circles and walking two by two? Well white folks um passed loitering laws and if there was more than three people together at once they could be arrested or if they stood in one place for more than just a couple of seconds they could be arrested so they walked two by two and they walked in circles so they didn't stop and they weren't in a group of more than just two or three and that's how they kept from getting arrested so when they were protesting Mm -hmm. that's how they kept from getting arrested Church. Can I share something with you? Can I share something with you? Go ahead. And this is connected to the the, the demand sphere and how I got mentally tough with women. Mm. Like I, how I got mentally tough. There was a video of the 1950s civil rights where they were training people mentally and emotionally to deal with verbal racist slurs thrown at them. And even to the point of pulling hair and smoking, blowing smoke in their faces. And I never truly, I was young when I saw this video. I was like maybe 16, 17. I just remember being pissed off. Like, how could they just set that? And then they showed the video of the training. The training, it was psychological. 
Yeah. And I've gotten to the point now I understand it because I got to a point through the mansion watching those videos of, you know, TikTok of women insulting us, Password Bros and black men and anything like I don't care. Like, at first, I used to be really sensitive, really upset. Yeah. Now, I just don't care. Like, you could talk about how my crooked eye, you could talk about my crooked eye, I've got cut to conus. You could talk about how fat I am. I would even roast myself. I don't care. Because you know I why. know what you... Yeah, go Cause, ahead. Because cause, 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 cause the truth, the, the reality is, is that no, they can say whatever they want. It don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Bitch, you it don't doesn't... matter. And that... And that... Exa exactly. Because once you allow them to have control over your emotions, then they have control over you. Absolutely. And that was the whole key of that training. And that's why I tell a lot of dudes um, who get upset with this, I send them links. I actually send them links. I said, you think that's bad? Let me send you this. And then they said, damn, man, why you sent me that? I said, because I need to toughen you up. Yeah. I need to toughen you up, bro. Yeah. Because, and once you're toughened up to this, because what happened is we were so, black men are so conditioned to racism to trace them through history to our family telling us stuff that we we can that's why we could go to a pwi and not really you know break like that like unlike some sisters we don't see too many black guys complaining about pwis yeah. it's usually black women um and uh, you know and and because we've been toughened by hearing these stories seeing these videos and things like that now i'm taking the same approach by sending those, those links to psychologically toughen the guys I know, um, especially thanks to the Red Pill. The Red Pill community, well, it was kind of really the manosphere, but Red Pill philosophy has psychologically toughened me up mentally to insults, shaming language, all this stuff, especially Kevin Samuels. His videos, his I used to be up at nights watching his live streams, seeing disrespectful women, manipulative women. Yeah. It came to the point after like a year, if I saw a chick on the screen, I know exactly where it was going. Right. That, the undertone and before it takes off into some ghetto BS, yeah. it all starts off this way. Even when they come on trying to be submissive, it's a cap, it's a, it's a, it's a ploy, it's, cap. it's a ploy. Really, I don't know.